Okay. Um, All right, so before we broke, I said there was one mistake that I made. On the demo. And I'll clean it up in a second. Remember, there was that transaction where we had a discount, a trade discount for 4% on the 9th with 8 views. Okay? So where I made the mistake is what we did in terms of, yeah, so here's, this is what I'm talking about. The second transaction that we had on the line. So what we did up until that point was perfectly fine, okay? Everything there is perfectly fine. But now when we're doing the cost of sale, that's where the error was made. Because Despite the fact that we have received less for these goods, all right, our cost of sales is still based on that 14,250, okay? So in order to calculate the correct cost of sales, this is what we needed to do. I'll just do it for you guys right here. Mm, let me do it here. Right, so we then say 14,250. Okay, we want to get the VAT exclusive amount first, the amount that we typically put in the first, 100 divided by 115. Okay, we get that. Okay, so if there wasn't any discount, we actually would have put this 12,900 and what that in the sales amount there. Okay, then we have the VAT exclusive amount. Now we say we want to get now the cost of sales. Okay, and we said that our cost of sales um, was 100. Okay, so this in the interest of time. Okay, so we take that amount for the 12,000, say times 100 that we want, divided by what we have, which is 130 for selling. And then that is the amount that we are supposed to put into cost of sale. Okay. This is why they say, have a good night for rest. Because coming back to time. So small mistakes like this. That stop you from getting a hundred percent. Not because you don't know, it's just because your brain is not as sharp as it's good. Okay? Welcome to that. Okay. Now we can continue with our tax payments demo. Okay. Um so in the cash the next cash payments transaction happened on the 21st with S Godwin. Okay, Sally paid to S Godwin. Okay, so as you can see there, we put the document number, we put the date, we put S Godwin, then we know this was for okay, for 15,000. Okay. And then are we going to calculate input that on this? Why not? Hmm? I agree with you, but why are we not calculating input that? Back to that. Is exempt. 15,000 under sound. Okay. So can you see now? Not only are you being tested, can you calculate that and calculate the VAT exclusive and calculate the VAT inclusive, but you're also being tested on, do you know whether something is non-allowable, something is exempt, something is zero rated, okay? So then we go to the next transaction, which happened on the 26th, trading inventory purchase, okay, and that is for 50,000, 50,000, 388. Okay. Here we know that we can calculate. We know that inventory is basically standard rated. So we say 50,388. See that? Oh. And what they, oh, yes, that was on the 21st as well. Thank you so much, sir. 
Okay, so that was drawings. Personal use, 5,000. Okay, so 5,000 there in the bank. Okay. And then you can literally just go to sundry and put 5,000. Okay, there's no input that on drawings. Now we can go to the center. On the bank, that increase of amount, 388, 50,388. Then you want a VAT exclusive for inventory, which is going to be 100 divided by 115. Okay. Right. Right. So we've got that, and then what's the that amount? What's the difference between the two? How much? So what's the that amount? If you cut me. So you go to that, you go to the 27th, it says sale of trading, oh, no, that's a bomb, purchase new equipment for the business, okay? So here we purchase equipment, again, that was for 15,000, yes. 15,000 off our bank account, okay, because obviously, when we're being charged something, just like when we're charging our customers, they're paying the VAT increase of amount. We never charge the customer the VAT increase. So that means we're going to pay out that amount of VAT that we exclude from there. Okay? And likewise, when we pay something, because we're the customer in that transaction, we pay the VAT increase of amount. Okay? That is for equipment. We don't have an equipment column, but can we claim VAT on equipment? Think about it, you claim that on a vehicle? We did. So we should be able to also claim that on it. equipment, right? So then let's do it. Okay. So what you want is the VAT for 15 over 115 times 15,000. Okay? So there's our VAT amount. Okay, so these things to be on there. You should just be saying to yourself, I want that, I want that, I want that. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I mean the the back excuse one. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's done. One more transaction there. Right. And that was for bank charges. That was for bank charges. So how much is the bank charges? Two fifty. Okay. So we put two fifty on the bank there. How much is deducted from our account? Now somebody tell me, is there that input that you can claim on bank charges? Are you sure? <laughs> Come guys. Somebody do it. I'm not going to give it to you. Bank charges. Can you claim that? What that category is bank charges? Is that what you want to What that supply or what that category is bank charges? Okay, there's a, I know interest to this one. Okay. Then charges is a different case of the other. How do you say that? Thank you. I 
Okay, right. Very, very important, I know. Very easy for us to think interest, so on, obviously. Okay, did you say the exact, that, uh, so it's obviously standard rate, okay? So 15% of 250, somebody tell me. 15 over 115, so the 250 is inclusive, right? Remember what they said in the beginning of the question? You can assume the amount is increasing or that unless they tell you otherwise. So here they haven't told us otherwise, so we are assuming. Yeah. What then is the VAT amount? Yes. Yeah. 22.61. Okay, so under sound D, how much are we going to put? 228.39, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. So now we've done our cash payment journal, okay? Now cash payment. Right. Then we move on to the cash. Unfortunately, in the petty cash, we only have two transactions. Okay, the first one happened on which day? First one, according to my thing here, is twenty-four. Is that correct? So here this is fifty. Oh yes, there was a transaction that happened in the fifty. Packaging material, purchase packaging material, and pay for it with the petty cash. Okay. All right. So, so you see, we don't have a bank column here. We only have petty cash because remember, petty cash is a separate account in and of itself. All right, and if we're paying out of the petty cash, we're gonna we're gonna uh, report that transaction in the petty cash, but not in the bank account. That's some stuff. So two nine six, I believe it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, can we claim that on packaging material? What that category is it? Non allowable, exhilarating, is standard, is exempt. What is it? What is packaging material? Anybody know? <laughs> what is stationary? Is stationary standard rated, exhilarating? What is it? What? It's standard. Okay. Packaging material is standard, stationary is standard. Okay. So then we can calculate input VAT on this. And how much is the VAT? You see. So we said 15, what we want, divided by what we have, which is 115 and 296. That gives us. Okay, so our what is that packaging material? We don't have a column for that. So that's going to give us two hundred and fifty. Fifty something. Fifty nine. Fifty eight. Fifty seven. Mm -hmm. How many ten? Three nine. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have that. Then we go on to the second transaction. Happened on the 24th. And there we purchased stationery. And how much did we purchase the stationery for? 558. 558. Okay, can we claim that in stationery? Can we claim into that? Yes, we can. So let's work out how much we're going to claim. And again, we can actually start with the VAT exclusive amount. In other words, the amount that we're going to put in the first month. So we could do, we could do this, say 100, 
divided by 115, we're going to divide it times 552. And that gives us 485. 485. Point. <laughs> okay, well, so that amount is the difference between the two, which is how much somebody. 72, yes, 79, 78. Okay, done. Okay. Somebody tell me how easy this was. It's easy, right? How is it easy, huh? Yeah? Just tell me this. I know, like that, but I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm not even going to worry about it. Not even why, as long as the genius is practice, I know. Okay? Right. So we've done the journals again in yellow. I've just posted the stuff for you guys. Okay? Alright, so all I wanted us to focus on, remember I said at the beginning of the lecture I had put in the document number, the day, what we would put in detail. So I wanted us to just focus on the number function. Okay, where we placing the numbers, why are we placing them there? I want us to be focused on that. Okay. Right. Now, if you remember the slides that we did, we said that the journals are used to summarize similar transactions together. All right. Then from the journals, we then need to post to the general ledger. All right, in the specific sphere time. All right. Now, I've left, I left some of them, but I think uh, what would then happen is, remember if we look at the beginning of our question, they gave us the balances for specific accounts, okay? So the first thing that we want to do when posting to the general ledger is to take these balances and put them in the respective accounts, okay? And here, can you see, they did not tell you whether it's a debit or a credit balance. So you have capital here and you have balance. So this is the amount. Okay? So you should know, via debt kit, via debt kit, that, oh, capital is obviously on the right side, so that means we specifically have a credit balance. Okay, and let's hold it to negative balance. If I never really see the state of capital. Then bank, we have 157,000. So we know bank is an asset. So this 157,000 should then obviously be a debit balance. Does that make sense? So you throw in all your balances. Okay? Once you throw in all the balances, now we can begin to post total from the journal to the general ledger. Okay? So, first things first, what do we do? We go and we look, who we're dealing with first, capital. Is that something? Thank you. I think. And go to bank. We look at the bank column. All right? And you can see we've done so many transactions in relation to the bank. But what we want is what we have here in yellow. Just to post it. Okay? That's what we're going to post to the bank account. So you take that 159,000. Okay, it might be different here because the, the answers, remember the answers were calculated on 14% back. Okay? So here, okay, but here we've actually plugged in the right amount. 159,481. Can you see that? Why are we debiting that? Remember when we were looking at the first journal we were looking at was a cash receipt. Cash receipt is money coming in the business. Okay? So can you see how now you're completely applying your knowledge? So if money is coming in the business, is that going to increase or decrease our bank account? It's going to increase. So when the bank account increases, what do we do? We get it or sell it? We get it. Okay? Can you now see how we're using our, our fundamentals that we learned from unit 1 to 3? Okay? So that's what we did. All right, and here we're actually supposed to put total receipt. Okay. 
right? So we've done that. Then we go to the other side now. And the next term. There as well. And there you can see the total is 289,000. Okay? So that's what we're going to post. This policy. And there we credit that because we know that's money we're leaving us. So that's our spending money. Alright, and there we're going to put total payment. Okay, and here actually we should also put CPJ under the folio. Okay, and there we should put the truth. Cash receipt journey. Okay, right. Now, if we look in the petty cash, do we have a bank account problem? Or any transactions that affect the bank? We have nothing. So those are the literal, the only two amounts that are being posted there. So now we can then balance the account. We look, which side is bigger? We add the balance, the opening balance, to the amount of cash you managed to generate. You see it adds up to 317,000. We look on the credit side, we see all we have is that 289,000. Okay, so that's the lesser side. So we go balance, carry down, Okay, what is the difference between the, 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 the bigger side and the left side? You see it's at 28,000. Okay, cool. Happiness. Plug that in there. Then we say here, balance goes down. In other words, we Can you see how we're posting things? So you literally have to do that for every single one of these account that you have. Okay. Here you can see we move on to the capital account and so forth. Are we trying to make a balance down? It's the exact same amount as the balance. Oh, how we calculate the balance of that. So let's let's actually do it. So you're comfortable with the how we calculate the 317,000? You just add it to okay and then we obviously establish that's the bigger side. So then we literally just say, okay, um, let me do it here. And we, we, we minusing the, the bigger side from the smaller side. Remember, the credit side is the smaller side, right? And we have established that the debit side is the bigger side. All right, so then we have to subtract, from the, uh, subtract the two from each other to find out what is the difference. Okay, so this was two eight nine oh three four point two one. Okay, then you have twenty eight, that's twenty eight thousand. So now you see how we calculate this. Okay. Are you comfortable with why we're putting it there? Okay. All right. Um you were with us in the last lecture. Okay. All right. So you remember, if we have one amount in the T account, so let's say, oh, I'm going to have to go back to that other 2.9, which is fine, I can go there. Okay, so we go. Look at the vehicle here, I'm going to go over the three rules again. When so it comes to balance in the field. So vehicles, we only have one amount. So this is the only way to be able to do this in the day. So we're going to do that. What is the balance of the vehicle house? Look through that, 300,000. Okay, that's, that's, that's how much we have in the vehicle. So that makes sense. So that has not been bad I know some of you in high school, you might have said, mm -hmm. Um, you know, your life, and then just put a few hundred thousand there. Oh, think about it. Because it's already done in five years, and the end of the Maybe just to illustrate what I'm saying. 
this is what I know. I actually had this discussion with someone earlier today, okay, and that's typically what they'd advise, advise them to do when you just do that. But can you see, that's just a waste of time. Because literally, you know, as you're going through the test or that, there's other stuff you're going to need to actually calculate. So why not spend time on those things rather than fixing something that you really want? Does that make sense? Okay, so if you have a single amount, you can just leave it like that. Okay. If you do do that, it's not wrong. You're not going to lose any more. Can you see with that we have two amounts, but they're both on the same side. So to balance that account, we literally are just going to come here and we're going to total what we have on that side. So 6,000 plus 4,500, what do we get? 10,500. Okay? And we balance that account. Bam. Okay? So that's the second rule. We could have two amounts there. We could have seven amounts there. As you'll see here, yes, with capital. Can you see all those amounts were on the credit side? All right, and we just total. Okay. And there you can also write a balance as well. Okay. Right, we've dealt with that. Then we have a situation where. Amount on the debit and the credit card, as you can see here in bank loan. Okay, when we have amounts both on the debit and the credit side, that's where we now need to say, okay, which side is bigger? That's where we start. So we look on the debit side, we have five thousand. We look on the credit side, we have a hundred thousand. Okay, so then we say, okay, the credit side is obviously bigger, which makes sense because what? Bank loan is a liability. It increases on the credit side. So then we say, okay, cool. We put a hundred thousand this side, okay, and we put a hundred thousand this side. Okay. Then we say, okay, the smaller side. What's the difference between the big side and the smaller side? So hundred thousand minus five thousand. What do we get? Ninety-five thousand. And then we say, okay, balance carry down on the smaller side. And then balance brought down. Can you see that both the balance carried down and balance brought down, same amount? Okay, we're just putting the balance brought down on the side that's the bigger side. Because what we want to end up saying is that when we now put this bank loan balance to the car balance, we're going to use this balance brought down. And since it's got a credit balance, we're going to Put that total on the credit card in the car balance. Okay? Right. Are you good now? Yeah. Right, okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, guys. Uh, I can't believe I'm not seeing you for so long. Seven minutes. And that's for units one to three. Okay, so you guys can actually get tracking with that right away. Okay. Um, so, but this is the final thing that I want to show you, and then I'm not going to continue because I don't um, think somebody informed me about the economics that you guys had, so I'm sure you're going to tie it by now. Others are drinking Red Bull, you won't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, after you've posted everything, all of the totals, and I need you guys to actually practice this as well. Okay, like I told you, I'm going to give you exercise uh, 4.8, and I believe there you're posting to the chat balance as well. Um, so once you've done that, from now, okay, posting to the general ledger, once you've done that, all the key accounts, then you then have to post to the chart balance. And as you can see here, I just left it there for you guys. Literally, all you're saying is the bank account. What was the balance? Okay, you have a debit balance of 14000 plug that in on the debit side. This is why I said the definition for the top balance it is literally just a list of all your accounts that you have in the business with their balances either on the debit or the credit side. And you can see there you have the balance sheet section. Okay. So 
So in the balance sheet section, all you have there is your assets, liabilities, and what else? Yes, this will be your assets and your liabilities and things that are for, affect your own assets. Okay? The nominal account section, literally there you have your income and expenses. And then obviously, remember, if you're on a PD check, if you've done the right thing, your credit side must equal your debit side. And that will confirm that all our double entries were done to it. That doesn't matter in the Things went wrong, okay? But don't, don't, don't panic if that happens in the first day exam because you will obviously still get much of money. Okay? So it's not the end of the world. Okay? Right. Are there any questions? Okay. Right. So guys, all that I'm going to ask you to do is... Ah, I didn't see you for a long time, so let's see the end of the report. I'm going to post this video. I might as well this now. <clears throat>